Good afternoon, Tony Dottino, founder of the USA Memory Championship and the president of Dottino Consulting Group. And I uh, wanted to at least uh, pick up as we were beginning to take plans for our 23rd USA Memory Championship. It got me to thinking about some of the basic principles and some of the basic concepts that we try to do in the hosting and the running of the USA Memory Championship. And what continues to amaze me is the number of people that actually believe their memories are fixed somewhere in their early years of life. And maybe we can go from one year old up to our teens. And that whatever that we have at that point in time, whatever we've been gifted with by the neurons and the mental capacities we have at that point is what we're fixed with for the rest of life. That's there all there is. And what I continue to find amazing about that is it's not true. Uh, and people subscribe to that thinking, which then impacts, in many cases, their lives. So the Memory Championship was created uh, as I began to study more and more in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, of what science and research was uncovering about our own mental capacities and our own memories and creativity and what we fixed with how much thinking we could do or did we have some variation. It got me to start to share this with people that we have unlimited potential. We have an amazing gift if we only knew how to follow the right pathways of thinking and thought. And so in 1997, I created and founded the USA Memory Championship to broadcast to the, to the country, to the people that want to listen to it, to say there's hope for all of us. There's, there are skills and things we can learn that can help us and improve our memories at any age. And I think of this as I was talking with uh, people over the last week, over how many individuals think that their memories are fixed, and therefore what is it that they can do? And that the outgrowth of that or the growth of that is coming from research and work being done on people worrying about dementia. There is nothing that seems to scare people anything more than losing their mind, losing their ability to know who they are and relate to people in their families and friends and being able to communicate with them in a positive way. And so the notion of dementia, early cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's that whole quadre of mental diseases is really having an impact on people worrying about, is there something I can do? Is there something I can learn? And of course, when you start asking them, so what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of those topics, it's always memory. And I say, take a look at our USA Memory Championship website. You'll see some amazing little, little clips and some videos. And this year you'll have the, the links going over to YouTube that really broke down some of the key speakers and some of the key competitions from the event that we held uh, in October at the Rosen uh, Square uh, at uh, Orlando. And you'll see little clips you can watch, 15, 20 minutes, and you can see uh, what people have been able to do. You'll get to listen to uh, neuroscientists from MIT and uh, Columbia universities. You'll hear uh, from uh, Lumosity. Uh, and I think you'll find it really fascinating and they'll be worth it. They'll be going up on YouTube in, in segments. And this way you don't have to watch for it's four hours right now. We've got almost 9000 people that have been watching YouTube on the memory championship, but you'll be able to watch it in little snippets. So we're breaking it down so people can see it. But the, the reason we're putting that work into it and my passion and excitement for this is over 22 years of running the USA memory championship. I've learned so many lessons. There are so many things I want people to know. And as I like to summarize it, there's hope for everybody, meaning there's a way that all of us at any of our ages can learn some of these fundamentals on how to improve our memories. And maybe it's how do we improve remembering people's names and faces? You know, I've met somebody at the store and I saw them walking at the park and I just couldn't remember their name, though I just met them, you know, two days ago. Or there are people at work that I associate with on a periodic basis, 
and I just can't remember their names. And I see them and I just remember where I saw them in an office, but I can't grab a hold of what their names were and remember it. And so I'm so embarrassed and I just I want to run away because I don't remember how to address them in the proper way of their first, and even first name. Um, you know, I, I was given an address or I was given a phone number uh, and I just, you know, 10 minutes later, if you asked me what that number was or what the address was, if I didn't write it down, you know what, it, it poofed, it's gone. It's no longer in my, in my brain. Uh, I read something for a school paper. I read something for a company policy. And I remember reading it. In fact, I reread it two times and I lost some of the key messaging when I went to do something with it and I had to write it down or I had to speak to somebody about it and I had to quote some of the parts of it and re remember the policies or practices or the lessons learned. I just couldn't remember where those, where those, God, what was it that I, I read? I read it twice. In fact, I, I know I read this, but my goodness, I, I can't remember much of what I read. And so these are the things that as you look at the pragmatic uh, uh, experiences that people go about in their lives, or all of the different things that then people, when they are confronted with a number or an address or a list of things that they're trying to retain uh, for their shopping or errands that they were doing, their first reaction is, oh my God, my memory is fading. My memory is disappearing or it's fading on me. I must be getting older. And the term that you hear a lot of people say, well, it's a, it's a senior moment. And what I keep trying to do is eliminate the term senior moment from our vocabularies because it's not, a, first of all, it's not a, what's the right word? It's not a way I want people to think about their own memories that, okay, when you forget things, you just, phone number or I forgot something I was supposed to do. Was I preoccupied with three other things? Did I have a number of, st of stresses in my life that were causing me to split my focus and therefore I didn't concentrate on one or two things, but I was trying to concentrate on a half a dozen things. And so if we can only start to step back and recognize demonstrating to get out it really demonstrates one of the principles of what happens to our memories when we feel isolated or we're alone and our memories then are getting impacted our whole brain health brain fitness is being impacted in a negative way so what are some things that we can do and so I tell people create some mental challenges and there's all kinds of games now in newspapers and magazines and we can go anywhere it's from crosswords to seducos to word jumbles to uh, puzzles uh, that people are now able to access in a much easier way. And if we want to umbrella that underneath something called mental challenges, we want to be thinking about what are some things we do on a daily basis that help us to exercise, so exercise our brain. And so if you just think of your brain as a muscle and by learning some new uh, physical activities, you can enhance that muscle. And our Maximum Memory Mastery Online course has been designed from years of hosting and running the U.S. Memory Championship and learning. So how do most of our top mental athletes remember strings of, of numbers? How do they remember a list of, of words, which we convert to reading comprehension and things that we want to retain and remember in a sequence in order? How can they go through uh, the order of a deck of cards, and I've seen school kids use that to remember their history or their social studies lessons. And so it's interesting how creative people can be once they learn what those fundamental skills are that we've seen people demonstrate over 22 years of hosting the USA Memory Championship. So as I think about the plans that we're making for our 23rd event, which uh, will be done virtually July 30th with finals to be here in uh, Orlando, Florida, if not at MIT on October 1st, then it brings me back to those lessons of why did I start the event in the first place? And I clearly began to study and understand that memory was something that really 
upset and concerned and caused anxiety and worry in people more than anything I could think of. And as I got to meet people and I got to talk with them and I got to report, work with reporters and news media people, right? We were in the early stages of exploding the, the growth of Alzheimer's and, and dementia in one sorts or another. And then in their brain and maybe build a little bit of extra muscle power in their thinking and in their ability to retain and recall information. And so that's what we're doing. And we're going into our 23rd year. We've had amazing stories of people that have participated in it. And we're looking at our 23rd event to be our best ever. We're getting better and better at it, though. And finally, with the virtual, believe it or not, we at least now have something that, that's more.